Welcome back to a new video. We woke up in the Ozarks this morning. Have a beautiful spot here next to this water hole. Um, plenty of spots for parking here. Nice campfire. We had a lot of friends out here, Peyton Page and their Jeep, and then uh, Parker and Fisher and the Forerunner. And we just kind of hung out. We got here a little bit too late, but I think we're gonna go hit some trails. Yep, and y'all stay tuned because I'm driving. As you can see out here in the Ozarks, during the summer, there's not any room at all. Um, it's so overgrown here in the Ozarks. Here in the summer is the main reason I don't come out here um, until the fall. And you just cannot fit anywhere with the full-size rig. You're definitely gonna get pinstripes. As you can see, all this, the trees are just crazy grown. coming. Straight. There's a good old quad to drive. Straight. There you go. Straight. Straight. Yep. And then up a little bit. Yep. All right, so we made it back from the trails. My wife did an amazing job driving. A lot of that stuff doesn't look too crazy, um, and it's not really that crazy at all, but these 37s on the WJ definitely make it look a lot smaller too, and just the amount of flex that the front has. Now, I wanted to put on the forklift and just see what's going on. Since I put the sway bar on, I've got a much thicker ADCO sway bar on the back. Um, it's the biggest one you can get, which I'll put up right here, and you can tell that the back is not flexing anymore. So it's not flexing really at all. Compared to when I did it before with the stock sway bar, it allowed it to bend and flex a lot more in the back. Um, so that's why we have kind of this tire stuffed already and the spring popping out. And literally both sides of the back are the same 
height to the tire from the fender. So I didn't think it was that bad where it was that stiff um, until I kind of did this and I've seen the, the front flex a lot more than it, it, you know, it's supposed to if the back was working as well. Uh, before I knew this, I ordered these limit straps before I knew that and I found a form saying that some guy with a six and a half inch Iron Rock off-road lift ordered 12 inch um, limit straps. Yeah, that's not gonna work. I mean, that is, uh, that's not gonna work at all. So our first bolt hole is really like there. Um, and the spring is just barely starting to come out. So we're gonna need like 18 to 20 inch limit strap probably. Um, so I wanna get that on here and measure and kind of see. We're not touching anything right here with the tire straight. Um, if you turn it, obviously it's gonna start rubbing more stuff. Um, it does tuck pretty well though. These are one and a half inch spacers that I've had on since I had the 35s. Um, but yeah, I just noticed from the footage and doing some trails like this, you know, this in this video when we went the other day, the back is not flexing at all, which is not great since I have long arms front and rear. Um, definitely want to use that since we have it. So going to probably switch back to the stock sway bar and um, get some more flex out of the back. And then we'll get some limit straps on so that we don't keep dropping springs. All right, so you can see that the spring is just barely starting to come out. I do have the retainers. Um, actually, I had IRA retainers before, but they broke out while I was on the trail. So I ended up welding on some pipe and that has worked pretty well so far, but I'm just barely dropping the spring. Also, you can see that the bump stop is not hitting in the correct spot. So I need to try to figure that out. Um, we've got the extended bump stops. We are not touching stuffing pretty well. But the back is not flexing at all. It just doesn't let your four link long arms work, um, which is kind of the whole point of having long arms all the way around. So we definitely want to fix that. Whether I do quick disconnects or um, or just put on the old, um, put on the original, we'll see. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.